Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a burn barrel without using plasma cutter or any type of welding. So, let's get to it. So we got the barrel inside and it's time to get to work. For any of you that don't know what a burn barrel is, it's a barrel that you burn stuff in. So uh, one of the cabins we have here on the farm has uh, had an old old barrel with next to the other one that they were using to heat it with heating oil. It's probably just got diesel, but uh, I'm not sure. So we're gonna open it up and take a peek. Uh, something to think about is you do definitely, definitely <laughs> make sure you know or have at least a pretty good idea of what's inside that. If it's a barrel that had gasoline or something that's much more volatile, you're gonna to wanna to be very, very careful with, um, be, it needs to be very clean before you start cutting or you're gonna have a mess on your hands. There's gonna be stuff on the walls, if you know what I mean. So, we're gonna open this one up. I'm really, really sure that it just has diesel on it since it was next to the other ones. Um, the label says some 5W40. So if that's it, that's super easy to deal with too. We might just have to burn it off, but we're gonna use a unibit for drilling vent holes, bottoms and along the sides. And I think I've got a metal cutting blade for the skill saw, which will make it really easy to zip the top open. So um, let's start making it. All right, so there you have it. It's a standard 55 gallon drum. And at least where we're at here in Alaska, we do not get any trash drivers. So I can take bags of trash to the dump. I wanna say it's like three or five bucks every bag. And then to fill up my truck, which is a six and a half foot bed, standard pickup truck bed, they want $36 a load. I mean, that's a racket. So we're gonna burn as much as we can. So all cardboards, papers, we try our best to limit the amount of garbage that we have coming into our house, but what are you gonna do? You accumulate trash and you gotta do something with it. So the solution here and in lots and most places here in Alaska is that we can just burn it. Um, every now and then we have burn bans due to the weather and we can't and you let it accumulate and then you have a big old rager when it comes time to, time that you're allowed to burn, but um, amongst everything else that we're doing today. You can see it's kind of a rainy, drizzly day here. And we did the texture on the bedroom and we're letting that dry. We have nothing else to do. So it's a perfect day to start tackling some of these other little projects. So today is the burn barrel. So we're gonna get to work getting it made. All right, let's take a peek. We'll give her the old smell test. Hopefully I don't pass out. Hmm. I don't really know what was in there. Definitely not diesel. It very well could just be left over. Leftover motor oil. Looks super clean. All right. This should be pretty easy. So we don't need the bottom, but we're gonna keep these because you just never know when you're gonna get another barrel. Let's take a punch. Before we cut it out, we'll take out these bungs. Add them to the pile. All right, so just to be safe, it passed the sniff test. Doesn't smell like any sort of petroleum product. 
We, I poured a little bit out in a cup and then put it on some concrete, wouldn't ignite. And the real boneheaded one, I just threw a match in there. So I'm still here, nothing blew up. So I feel good going ahead and we're gonna cut the top out. So remember, you could use like an angle grinder and cut below this rim that you see here on the barrel. But the problem is the, this rolled over edge is where all your strength is on the top. So if you cut on the inside, one, it gives you a guide that easily cut it out. And two, you maintain the rolled edge. It gives that circle more structure. So that way, as you burn and the metal degrades, it doesn't deform easily and it holds together better. So these things don't last forever. They're disposable, but you should be able to get two, three, four, so years out of it, as long as you don't keep it out in the elements 100%. But we're gonna cut it up the top out. Excuse me, we're gonna cut the top out, and then we're gonna use that unibit, drill some holes along the sides, down low, as well as in the bottom. And that's pretty much it. So let's get to slicing. Not totally necessary, but I like to go through with a file, knock that burr off. And the only reason I do that is that you are gonna be putting your hands in and out when you're burning stuff. There might be stuff that you gotta poke around and just throwing them in there. It's easy to catch your hand or arm. And there's no sense getting cut. So it doesn't take a few more. Just take your, uh, this is a single cut bastard file and just knock that burr off. This is the mess I'm dealing with. <laughs> you move and you try, not try, you get 170 chickens, you do a master edition, and put in 6,000 square feet of garden and tend to it. This is the mess you get to deal with. I'm still living out of milk crates and boxes trying to find tools. So, we'll let the search begin. Never again. Found it. So you don't know what a unibit is, it is a stepped bit, and you can see right there. It has uh, graduations, so this one goes from a quarter to three quarters of an inch. Great for drilling through metal. Um, my dad was an electrician, he had these laying around. They're not, they're not cheap, this is like a $30 drill bit, and you can get Mondo ones, and they only get more expensive, so uh, don't lose it. I was getting nervous, it took me 30 minutes to find it. But we're gonna take the unibit, and I'm more or less just gonna kind of randomly concentric circles. I'm not gonna lay it out, it's a burn barrel. It's not really worth my time on that. Um, but we're just gonna go through and drill some holes from the bottom to about halfway that way, right? Kind of like the rocket stove principle, you wanna be able to bring air in from the bottom and the sides, and it's gonna burn hotter and faster and cleaner. So we have, at the end, we have just some ash and not big chunks of un um, uncombusted fuel. So I'm going to punch some holes.
that's it. Not a whole lot of time. You need a Sawzall, a drill, and a unibit. And you really don't even need the unibit. You get away with a regular twist bit. It's just gonna be not as clean and easy to hold a drill. Because the way those twists, right, the flutes, it'll suck it in. It's not as clean, but it'll still work. So, it's kind of hard to see. Might be able to see my hand, or the glove, right, the blue, right there. So we've got holes, one, two, three rows, and I went around all the way, and then on the bottom, boom, holes on the bottom. So, I'll take you guys outside real quick, we'll give her a test run, and I'll show you just a couple tricks for making this burn hotter and faster and cleaner. All right, so by drilling the holes in the bottom, it works really well, but there's a caveat. They need to be raised up off the ground. If it's just sitting on the ground, you're not gonna get any airflow, and it kind of defeats the purpose. So, if you're gonna put holes in the bottom, lift it up. I've got it on just some old two by two galvanized fence posts that we had laying around. But you use pavers, rocks, you use a couple logs, just be aware, right? They're gonna dry out, burn, and rot. And anyways, metal, stone, rock, that's your best choice. Um, if you're gonna build a burn barrel, check with your local fire department, city, township, borough, wherever you live, county, realize that they're not legal in all, all areas. Uh, in the places where they are legal, a lot of times you're gonna need either a permit and there's some regulations that you need to follow, like I actually need to put some screening on here and have a screen for top, pouring rain, and uh, I've got the stuff to do it, but I wanted to get this out, at least show you this meat and potatoes of how to make a burn barrel. Uh, I put just a little bit of waste oil that I have on a rag and that gets it going. We got random cardboard, a bunch of random burnable trash that we're going to light off. Uh, but please just check with your fire department or whoever the authority is that's going to have the jurisdiction for this. Have a hose, which I got right here out of frame nearby. And um, right, pick a good site. Don't just do it like out in the dry grass where you're going to start a fire. You need to have some common sense. Think about that if it gets away, where's it gonna go? And you're gonna burn down the whole neighborhood because you can read the stories, you'll be liable, and you'll go to jail and you'll pay a lot of money. So use your head, put it in the right spot. We have ours just on dirt. So we're in a good spot and it's been raining for like two straight days. So let's light it off and see, see how hot we can get this thing going. There we go. Probably don't want to burn these. Alright, so there you guys can see it. I don't want to get too close here, but. It's just a few boxes. So it doesn't take much. Having all those holes in there really gets it going, ripping, and that's what you want. Nice clean burn. It does the thing. It's burning out something in there. Well, anyways, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this is useful on how to make a burn barrel. It's a great way to burn up your trash, save some money if you got an old barrel laying around. You can get them for free just about anywhere. Just be mindful of what is on the inside before you start cutting. Definitely since you burn. So, thanks for watching. If that was useful, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you have a different style or tip for how I make a better one next time, please leave it in the comments. We'll see you guys on the next video.